What's up? I'm Chris Cadenhead. I'm a professional piano player, and this is my review of the VI Labs Modern D. Full transparency, they did send this to me, but I can say whatever I want to. They're not paying me to do this. No money's been exchanged. I've been with the VI Labs company for quite some time since True Keys series. If you haven't checked out the True Keys series, my personal favorite is the German. Again, I'm not getting any affiliates. I'm just saying this is my personal favorite. It's a Bechstein. It's it's really nice. So anyway, I've been a fan of their products for quite some time. I was a Ravenscroft artist. Um, and for context, if you haven't seen the last video, I talked about this in the last video where, where I was doing my first impressions. I just opened the library. I just started playing it. I was reacting to it in real time. I was really impressed by this. But for context, I am a guy who plays Steinway D's constantly. So if you haven't had the chance to play an actual actual Steinway D, especially one like this. It's a Steinway Model D from New York, not Hamburg. Um, it's one of the newer ones. It's a really nice one. So take it from me. I know what a Steinway is supposed to sound like, supposed to feel like, how it's supposed to react. Keep that in mind when you're hearing my thoughts and 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 all this, right? So that being said, um, let's get into this. Let's get into this modern D here. As you heard, I was just playing just a random blues. Uh, maybe you can tell me what the title of it is in the comments. I don't know. I was just improvising. Let's Let's look at the interface here. So we got the release volume, the key noise, which is off by default, a silent strike, which is interesting, sympathetic resonance volume, sympathetic resonance polyphony, and on the right here we got pedal resonance, pedal noise, true pedal action, re-pedal, repetition strikes, we got some reverb here, and the amount, um, half pedaling, mute strikes which is cool and an una corda pedal which is the soft pedal on a real piano the hammer is striking three strings at a time and when you engage the leftmost pedal which is a soft pedal it moves the hammers so that it's only striking one string at a time which makes it softer and stuff and I have a second pedal here that I've assigned to this and we'll get to hear that in just a minute uh so yeah so you, you've got the, the amount of polyphony here um you can change the the midi cc of your sustain pedal your sostenuto pedal or the muted strikes right here um and this is the imaging the the left to right the stereo width you know um the tone a timbre shift and we saw this on the modern u that's their last release is the modern u so that one was a work of art if you ask me, it's a smaller piano. It's an upright piano. It's a Yamaha U1, uh, I believe, U3. I'm not sure about that. But um, I guess they used, uh, this is the same branding here, the same uh, logo. So I imagine they use the same technology for that. Okay, what we got here? EQ. That's nice, an onboard EQ. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, and then you can load up different mics, right? So um, I thought what might be cool is to just you know go through the the effects and the and the GUI and just see. Okay, so let's look at on the second page here. We got the MIDI response. Now this is to me one of the most crucial aspects of any library is the MIDI curve, how it responds to your playing and and how it, how it manipulates the samples because you're not going to get a good feeling from it if notes are jumping out everywhere and all that so you have to you know and, and leave a comment below let me know if doing a video on velocity responses and how to get the best you know if you have a, a semi weighted um you know waterfall keyboard uh, heavy let me know if that's something you'd be into you know and uh, I'd be happy to do that and then the tuning presets i guess you can interesting okay you can change the tunings um on here per note which is cool but uh i don't know if i would mess with any of that because if i'm buying a library like this i want this pristine clean sound so um tuning included right so and they got some presets here so let's just go through some of these uh some of these presets right so the two preset categories are effects only and mics and effects so the effects only i guess just changes you know what's going on on the on the ui with the controls here and the mics and effects loads up different mic presets right so let's let's start there let's hear what these different mics sound like so all around clean that's what we have right here okay so what mics okay it has oh we got a hammers mic that's nice so we got the close mic u80 norman u87 the hammers mic which is the 
Neumann M49s. And what is this? A side perspective, right? So side perspective is right here. By the way, this is the best place if you ever like come into contact with a actual piano, the best place to listen to it is right on the side, right in the in the curve there, right? So um, anyway, so that's where the mic, that's where this side mic is, which is cool. And they got a room mic. That's tight. I want to hear that. All right. So let's hear this. Uh, let's hear this preset. You know what let me change this buffer because we're getting some clicks even though the latency will be terrible that's okay This thing is out of control, bro. <laughs> anyway. Latency. Okay, like a, I like I like the reverb on there. Man, this is this is outrageous. It's the way it the way it the way it feel. I don't know. I don't know how to exp explain it, but the way it feels is just it's just so responsive. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, but it's really it's really nice. Okay, uh, here we go. Big resonant player. Okay, so I see the player mics loading up right here. What what mics are these? I wonder. Oh, C four fourteens, AKG. You can't go wrong with that. Let's see. Big resonant. So what what's different here? Okay, it, it's got some more sympathetic resonance polyphony going on. It, the default is ten, I think. Right, so fifteen. A little bit more pe pedal resonance here. More volume. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. It's still October. We're not ready for Christmas yet, but, uh, <laughs> okay, so. That low end is just, it's crazy. Mm, gorgeous, gorgeous reverb, man. Okay, you know what? Now, now let me hear, now this would be a good opportunity. I love the sound of this. Let's listen to this, uh, this uh, una corda pedal here. So what, what you do is you go up here where it says sustain pedal, right? This is for the MIDI CC selection. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to choose una corda and on my keyboard i have a cp88 and on my cp88 i went in and um mapped another pedal to cc63 so i changed it here but we have to load the samples first so you just you just click the check mark here now 
and so you can turn them on or off. This one loads the samples. This one turns the effect on or off, right? So now I have them on. Okay, that's that's no soft pedal. Here's the soft pedal. You hear the difference there? It's it's quite drastic, which means this is a newer piano. Like if you if a piano if a, especially I don't know maybe Steinways are 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 especially susceptible to this, but if that pedal gets used a lot, I don't know. To me, it 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 I don't know. There's not much. Uh, what am I trying to say? In other words, the variation of how soft it gets can vary from piano to piano. I'm going to take off the sustain pedal, the soft pedal. Now back on. I mean, the endless sustain is just unreal. It's just unreal, man. It's so good, bro. So good. <sighs> they they murdered it with this. But yeah, get in there with your with your pedal. Now now see what I wonder is um I see how they have half pedal right here. Okay, so with half pedal, so what that is is if you have like if you have a a continuous control sustain pedal like a, a, a Yamaha FC4, I believe. Roland has one too. Um, but what that will get you, so basically with a, just, an, just a regular sustain pedal, like I have this M Audio one here, old one. With a regular sustain pedal, it's just on or off, right? So, so it's zero to 127. Zero, zero and 127, that's all you get. But with a continuous sustain pedal controller, um, and if you enable this half pedal right here, you get all the gradations, zero, one, two, three, 40, 50, 60, 100, all the way up to 127. Like in other words, your keyboard sends out those sustain pedal numbers, right? So what they did here with this half pedal thing is that, and I, w I wish I had one to show it here for you, but what they have have here is when you enable this the software will give that to you you know so you can you can and and how you do that on a real piano you know you that's how you like can blend certain chords together and i'll, I'll put up a whole a separate video about how to use the damper pedal effectively outside of just on and off right so look out for that um and yeah maybe and i'll use this software to do that so i'll get a hold of a uh, of a continuous controller pedal and and we'll map that and see how that works so that's what's up with that okay here's the wide emotion preset all right so we got we got two mics loaded up here what is this okay so we got the side 4006 i don't know what that is is that dpa uh, i'm i'm not sure at all actually all right so we got the close mics and the side perspective all right let's see this Interesting.
Okay, so so we got the width here. Okay, so it's a lot wider. The tone is at what is this? Plus one. The timbre is minus two. Okay, so from what I understand, this timbre knob, when you move it, let's say to the left or minus, when you move it to the left or minus, what it does is it basically stretches the samples. So like, if I play this C here, we've got timbre at minus two. So if I'm not mistaken, what what the software is doing is actually triggering two half steps above in this case, because we're, we're going minus two. So plus one plus two is D. So I think what it's doing is triggering this sample, but stretching it down to get C, to get the note C, but we're using this, the recorded sample of D. I think that's how it works. Don't quote me on it. I'll get to the bottom of that. So that being said, like, so if we, so for example, if let's say we go, let's go extreme here. Let's say we go minus 10. So if we go plus 10 up from C, we got C and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's B, the next B flat up. So I'm playing the note C, but I think it's taking the sample from the B flat that's up here and stretching it down 10 semitones, I think. Let's see what that sounds like. Interesting. Man, you can make some nice presets with that. So maybe, you know, maybe not something you'd use all the time, but but if you want to get experimental with it, you can, which is cool. So, right. So, um, all right. So let's go to a different preset, old jazz record. Let's see what this is. Yeah, that's not bad at all. <laughs> that's 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 sick actually. Now, only thing I'm noticing is that like some of the notes are I mean, I would just, I don't know, it's hard for this to translate to you because you're not the one feeling it. But like, um, I would just go in here and, and you know, do some kind of curve. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, all right, so let's, let's check out these settings here. So the release volume, that's just what it sounds like. It's the release samples of the note. Like when you play a staccato note. Versus if we turn it off. Yeah, you definitely want to keep that on. <laughs> you just leave that at default, you know. That's what I would do. Just double click the handle here. The just move this. You can just double click that and put it at zero. Right, so the key noise the key noise is down because it takes up a lot of CPU apparently. And you can't really hear that in the context of a, of a mix. But if you're doing solo piano stuff, you definitely you definitely want that. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up just so you can hear it. Play soft. You see when I, when I let off the key, 
that that's the that's the that's the hammer returning to its position like if we turn it all the way off versus So that definitely adds some realism. Right, so I love to just, I love to crank that sucker right there actually. The silent strike, that's basically, you know, when you when you play a key as soft as you can on a real piano, you don't get any, any sound. It doesn't produce any sound because the hammer doesn't hit the strings. But the reason why you want to do that is for the next setting I'll show you, which is the sympathetic resonance, right? So. I'm holding a key down, which is the note C. I'm holding it down, but it didn't make any noise, as you heard. So when I play the next C up, you hear that? That is, that is the strings from the C that I'm holding. Those strings are sympathetically vibrating because of basically how the piano works and how the overtone series works. So this C right here is exciting the strings from the other C. Same thing if I do the next C after that. Right, so now if I play a chord silently and I play that chord in other places of the piano, you hear it. But if I play a different chord than that, it's still there, you just don't hear it as much. You know. But if you play those same notes you're holding down, that's called sympathetic resonance. And so this, this slider right here is the volume of the resonance. So if I turn it all the way up, hear how loud that is? I wouldn't put it that loud, but, or turn it off, you don't get any of it, right? So, so sympathetic resonance is really what makes a piano sound real to me. So, so you see this polyphony, simp, polyphony, that's sympathetic resonance polyphony. So that's basically how many, you know, how much of the, re like, what am I trying to say? How many notes you're able to play of the same chord that you're holding down that triggers the resonance. I don't know if I worded that properly, but like if we turn it all the way up. Right, so basically what you're hearing now I turned it up to 40. Now the sympathetic resonance samples haven't cut off. Like uh, if you had if you had polyphony, regular polyphony, let's say at the minimum, as soon as you start playing more than you know three, four notes, the notes you were playing previously would would cut off. You know, versus if you have maximum polyphony, that means all the samples you play with the sustain pedal are still going to be present. And you use polyphony, if you don't know, the reason why you might want to set it to minimum is if you have a huge session, you know, and it's taking up a lot of your system resources, your RAM and stuff like that. You can turn the polyphony all the way down if you, if you only need to play a few keys, you know, in the middle of the piano, let's just say, and you don't need to hold the sustain pedal down and play every note, let's say. You don't, you don't need it set to max, right? So that's kind of the same thing that's what's happening here in the sympathetic resonance polyphony, right? So, you know, so that's what's going on there, right? So the pedal resonance. Now, when you press the sustain pedal, it lifts all the dampers off of every string, you know, like, so the, now, now you heard that sound, the pedal is up. That means all the dampers that usually come down on the string to stop the notes are all the way up. So what happens when you do that is now all of the strings are vibrating not just the note that you played because all of the dampers are are not muting the other strings you know versus you know i'll turn the pedal resonance up so versus this single note the sustain on a real piano with this note open only the damper from that note is lifted but when you again when you so you you don't get any you don't get any, any resonance on the soundboard from, from having the dampers up. But now when I press the pedal,
hear all that movement, that's from the pedal resonance. So that's that's basically what this pedal resonance knob. It's the amount of res. It's the volume of the sustained pedal resonance, and that that contributes to the sound morphing and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, that's what happens on a real piano. So that's what's going on there, right? And pedal noise is just what it sounds like. I'm pressing the pedal, no noise, right? So the pedal noise is sort of a subjective thing. Certain people love it. Certain people hate hearing it. I personally love hearing it, you know. Versus all the way up. You know, it's it's just another thing that adds realism to, to a virtual piano, you know. So that's what's up with that. So I'm not I'm not too sure what the true pedal action does or is, uh, but the re-pedal basically allows you to catch the sustaining notes of a chord. So if I go like this, you hear how there's some extra noise after I... Right, so I can catch all that if I press the sustain pedal. You see, that's, damn, that's really good actually. So I played a short note, and then I caught the sustain of it. Again, that's what happens on a real piano. So if I take that off, all you're hearing is the pedal noise, but none of that extra I mean, that's, that's brilliant, brilliant. So repetition strikes. So when you play more than one note on a real piano, the sound is building up per strike. There's so much energy there. That means every hit will sound different because of the new added sonic information that happens. So if we turn this off, repetition strike, and I play the same note. Now you can hear some round robin samples, you know. Versus. It's very subtle. It's very subtle, but you can hear the difference there. I heard it anyway. Right, so that's the deal with that. And of course, we heard this reverb. Let's see what, what kind of... So we have real spaces versus digital spaces and special effects reverbs, which is pretty cool. So real space big. Let's go a gothic cathedral. Huge. I'm just goofing off over here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got stuff like that or, or all grain concert. Interesting. Turn the, so here's the amount of the reverb.
Anyway, that sounds great. <laughs> what am I doing? 90s kid. Um, right. Digital spaces. What we got? Um, EMT 250, which I love. The 140 surprising. EMT 140. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got some great sounding reverbs in here. Special effects. What is this? Percussion box. Let's see this. Ooh, interesting. Wow. Okay. Okay, okay. Interesting. What is this? Combo effects long? Oh. That's pretty cool. So, you know, interest they got some interesting stuff in here. Uh, that's that's I'm glad they suspension. What is this? Oh. Sounds like a spring spring verb or something. See, so now I would use this with the EQ, like, and I would take some highs, highs down. Okay, so you got to turn on the EQ, right? So I would now I would take some highs, take the highs down. So I don't know, you know, it's, uh, look, man, you got so many options here to, to really create your own sort of sound. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm really, I'm really loving this. Um, shout out to the guys at VI labs for sending me this. Um, again, they didn't pay me. I'm saying whatever I want to say. These are my honest, like I, I'm a fan of virtual instruments, especially good ones, especially pianos and especially Steinways. So I'm really blown away by this. I'm going to get in in here and just really have fun, make some tracks. I'll keep posting videos with this thing in context, maybe layering it with different pianos even or different roads or different, uh, you know, strings and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one. Enjoy. <laughs>